Okay, now we're in Photoshop and we're going to take a look at how to use the UV maps that we just uploaded for the plant stand in Second Life and um, use them in your graphics program. I'm using Photoshop, but you can use any graphics program. It'll all work much the same way. By the way, guys, I'm really sorry about the traffic noise. There's nothing I can do about it. We don't have our new studio built yet and um, you're just going to have to put up with it. I'm really sorry. But this is the UV map. Notice that it's 1024 by 1024 pixels because that's the largest thing you can have in Second Life. I really designed it to be at a 2 to 1 aspect ratio, so let's fix that first. We'll go to Image, Image Size, make sure Constrained Proportions is not enabled, and then I'm just going to change the width to 2048 and click OK, and now I have my nice round pieces. Now this is a UV map. Um, we already discussed how you have the vertices which um, tell Second Life where to look for the texture and you have the lines, the edges between the textures and you have the white parts which are the polygons between the lines. And on this map particularly you also have gray area which shows where there aren't any polygons at all. Those will not be used so don't put anything in there that you want to be seen because it won't be. You can put anything in there that you don't want to be seen like all of these labels and that works fine. These are called discontiguous islands so we have vertices here and here and we also have them at the edges of the discontiguous islands. Now, that's just the way that I made this UV map. But because things get extrapolated, remember when you get to the edge of the island, you're going to have to leave a little bit of bleed space. So a handful of pixels past that so that when the stuff right next to the vertex here is extrapolated, you don't get any background in. There are a couple of different philosophies when you're making a UV map. In this particular case, the philosophy I used was to give things that you want to be able to put more detail in a larger area on the map. This is the top of the top of the shelf, and it's pretty big. This is the bottom of the top of the shelf, and it's considerably smaller. That's the philosophy that I used for this. The other philosophy is to make everything the same scale on the UV map, which is what I did here on the legs. So if you put a checkerboard on this, all of the squares on the checkerboard are going to be about the same size all over the model, and that's the other way to do it. So um, let's go back to this one. Now in order to actually use this, we want to be able to draw underneath the UV. So the first thing we're going to do is float the UV map. Since this is Photoshop, I can do that by double clicking. And then I'm just going to name this UVs. And I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. And I'm going to knock down the opacity some, um, just till you're comfortable with it. So you can see the lines, but you can also see past them into the stuff that's underneath it. Now I'm going to make a new layer below that by holding down the command key. That's control on a PC and just clicking on the new layer icon and that puts a new layer underneath the layer I'm working on. And I'm going to get shapes and I'm going to use this shape here um, which I actually made for this model. And now see this dotted line? I have that in there, it's not part of the model, that's just so that you can see where the center of the circle is so that you can make things line up more easily. And I'm going to hold down the mouse button and then hold down Shift and Option, that's Shift and Alt on a PC, and pull it out so I can get my first design on here. Now, notice that there are little green lines which are the lowest LOD, and there are blue lines which are the medium LOD, as well as the black lines which are the highest LOD. If I pulled this out so that it was close to the black line, it would look really good at the highest LOD, but it would be clipped at the medium and lowest LOD. So um, you have to decide how much you want it clipped, how important all of that is to you. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out so that it will not be clipped at the medium LOD. Um, it'll be pretty close to the edge, but not actually gone. And it will be clipped at the low LOD because that is so tiny that this won't even be a pixel wide, and so I don't think it'll matter. Then let go, and you can see our design. Now I'm going to put another one in the middle, and it's the same thing, just hold it down and drag it out until it's about the size you want it, like that. And now let's put one on the bottom shelf too, that is the shelf top piece over here. And um, we'll choose a different design because that's going to be smaller. And just pull it out like that. Now we could also put it here, but because of some stuff I'm going to do later, it would get really dark and strange, so I'm going to show you how to deal with that in just a minute. We'll just leave it like that for now. Now I want this to look like marquetry that is cut into the top of the table. So I'm going to 
get the unshaded texture that is in the package of textures. And I've already resized this so that it's 2048 by 1024. It will, of course, be 1024 by 512 in your package. And then just tap V to get the Move tool and drag it over here and drag it down below the image. And there you have it. I'm going to hide the UV so I can see what I'm working on more easily. And I'm going to go back up to the design and I'm going to get some wood texture. Now this is an arrowway texture, so is the U. I really recommend their textures, they're wonderful. And I'm going to drag that up here and then I'm going to clip it by holding down the Option key, that's Alt on a PC, and just clicking and that will clip it to the um, black that is below. And now you can see we have wood grain on both areas, just like it would be. Now you also usually get um, a black outline, so I'm going to select the layer that has the designs on it again and I'm going to just double click on that and I'm going to pick an outer glow and I'm going to change the color to black and the mode to multiply. I'm going to change the technique to precise and I'm going to increase or decrease the size to three pixels and that's my marker tree which looks pretty good, huh? Now I want to get this design and put it here in the middle. See where that circle is? So I'm going to hide this so that all I have is that part and then I'm going to select this. I'm going to go up here to Edit, Copy Merged and um, then I'm going to show all this stuff again, drop the selection with Command D, Control D on a PC and then I'm going to Paste and um, should paste it above so that it's not in the way. And now I can take this and resize it and I won't have really black outlines. Not that this is going to be big enough to really worry about, but um, let's zoom into 100%. We'll just line that up in the middle there. And now we'll have a design in the lowest LOD as well. So that's pretty much all we need to do for that. Now I want it shadowed too, and there is a shadow texture in there. And once again, I have increased the size of this. Get V, drag it over, and then I'm going to change this to multiply. And I think I'll reduce the opacity to about 70. And there's my texture, all ready to go. So I'm going to make a copy of this. And the way I'm going to do that is to click on the history button down here. I'm going to close this again. That makes a copy. And then I'm going to flatten the image, discard the hidden layers, and I'm going to resize it. Um, I'm going to constrain the proportions this time. And I'm going to make it 1024 by 512 because that's plenty big enough for Second Life. And then just save as um, my plant stand shelves. And I cop I was practicing this before, so I already got one copy. But I'm just going to save over it. And save it as 24-bit Targa. And now we're ready to upload. I've also done the legs. All the same techniques, so I didn't think you needed to see it all over again. But you can see it there. A little design I made on the legs. And we're ready to upload this stuff to Second Life. So we're going to do that in another movie. See you there.